Independent Investor Channel. My name is Ryan, rolling out the weekly updates. So I'm going to do this as appropriate, uh, which it is, absolutely. There's a, there are a lot of people out there that um, may benefit uh, from hearing a, a consistent update uh, as lean as the landscape may uh, appear to be now. Uh, I think it helps for uh, you know myself in, in the best capacity that I can to provide some context around what's going on right now in the short term, which really in, in the long scheme of things doesn't mean a whole lot. I look back over the history of how this company has come to public markets. And I tell you what, I can earmark an awful lot of positive news with highly on holdings. Um, the, the real detriment, I think, to uh, be, becoming a participant as a retail investor is to become a participant, you have to own the stock. Uh, and the stock has been nothing but dismal nothing but dismal and uh, I, I kudos that go out to a couple channels here uh, drive mix game of course uh, putting out some really really incredible content um, he's out there he's enjoying his truck uh, and he provides a, a, a really nice insight from the, the ground level i appreciate those efforts so shout out to dexter uh, another shout out to uh, uh, bloodhound investing uh, bloodhound dividend investing has been doing some nice uh, coverage of highly on from his perspective i, I think he does a good job uh, so kudos to you from the Independent Investor Channel, absolutely. And uh, last but not least, man, Paul with Rat Pack Stocks, man, I like the guy a lot. I really do. I think he speaks from the heart. I think he speaks uh, from a genuine nature. It really does. And um, um, I'm just glad to know the guy, uh, at least through the network of, of, of folks that are covering this um, and the mission that I think um, goes a, a lot deeper than the dollars and cents that make up. Uh, an investment uh, thesis, whether uh, it be in theory or in reality. Uh, I, I think, you know, where there's a, a active investors in the stock right now getting absolutely pulverized, um, the, more, the more pulverized active investors get, the more opportunity potentially opens up for uh, investors that are sitting on the sideline, uh, perhaps looking at this and maybe acknowledging that there's a little bit more uh, of another side to the coin rather than there's no hope, there, there's no there's no end in sight. There's no sales. Uh, there's no news. <laughs> you know, so you look at this thing from two different lenses, and you know, the stock market at any given time can provide whatever val validation you're looking for or or not. Uh, you know, the stock market is a is just a really really interesting place, and it, it toys with people. I, I don't think the human mind was really made to make sense of it. I think over the last hundred years of market action, um, there have been a lot of people that have tried, <laughs> a lot of people. Uh, a lot of people have won really well with applying fundamental investing to stock market investing. But as far as stock picking the market, uh, it has been proven uh, somewhat of a futile activity. And, and um, this is uh, no different uh, outside of the fact that um, it is a stock that I, I cover uh, with great detail. Uh, and I follow with intent, um, the sincerity uh, with regard to the company's mission, uh, what they're doing, um, what they're aiming to strive for uh, in an industry that I'm going to talk about here uh, with regard to uh, accountability and the lack thereof. But uh, um, it, it's one that I cover. Um, I am a stock owner in the company. Um, I've sold the stock twice um, for, for full transparency. I uh, made a liquidation about um, at the beginning of 2021. Um, it was right after the stock had really fallen from grace, and, and I took some liquidation at $26 a share. I put a $6,000 profit away in the company. But mind you, this was after writing it all the way up to $58 um, and all the way down to my first really attempt to not continue to catch a falling knife or, or, or maintain my position on a falling knife. Exited the position shortly after started to accumulate the position back again sub 20. Um, and that's what I've been doing ever since uh, all the way up until my second uh, sale, which happened just over a month ago, um, which was 4,000 shares of the company. Uh, I sold out the 4,000 shares of the company I felt like the, the momentum and the delay and how the stock market was viewing both the delay caused by the supply chain issues, as well as the production delays that were um, as a result of the supply chain issues, uh, unable to come to commercialization. 
um, whether it be warranted or not uh, to, to demoralize the stock that had already come and fallen from grace. Uh, you know, there's thousands of companies out there that get the nod that don't, believe, that, that don't deserve half the nod that they get. Um, Hylion just so happens to be in a world of its own right now. It, it seems like the whole weight of the world is against this company. I'm not quite sure I understand that. And I think that's where Paul with Rat Pack stocks really, um, he, he, he resonates with me in his message because I don't really think it's a money thing with Paul. Uh, it's not a money thing with me either. Um, I buy a stock uh, for the uh, sheer expectations that it could do one of two things, go up or down. Um, and I'll hold the stock until it goes up. So does it do me any good day to day to come on to YouTube and bitch about what it is? I don't put a whole lot of value in. Eh, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I've just been doing this an awful long time and the application, whether some consider it psycho, um, some can consider it, um, you know, uh, blind conviction, uh, whatever that is, uh, no problem. I throw stones, no problem about it. I look at things like this and I consider it to be fairly courageous um, when you come on and you exercise uh, that courage in the face of adversity. Uh, and, and that's exactly what I'm doing. And, There'll be a lot of bandwagon players, no doubt about it. There's too much pedigree here in, in Hylion and what they're trying to do and move goods from point A to point B. It's, it's really not that difficult in what they do. It seemingly, Hylion is being priced as if it's done something wrong. Um, and that's just not the case at all. <laughs> the, the, the facts just don't align with Hylion doing something wrong. Um, did they take an opportunity to come to public markets? Certainly. Um, did they come to public markets early? Perhaps. Uh, you know, that's yet to be seen. Uh, it may potentially all be futile uh, in reflection of this young company uh, who's being judged right now as if it's going to fail. Uh, it is being priced as if it's going to be uh, a failure. Uh, it has provided zero credit for its intellectual property. Uh, the uh, relationships and the networks that they do have, uh, relationships solidified over the last five years, count them five years, uh, not over the last 18 months that they've solidified um, uh, the, the return it, I believe, was the last one that uh, is interested in uh, continuing its relationship with Hylion. Uh, those continuations and, and solidifications of business connections uh, from company to customer um, are invaluable. They're invaluable. Uh, and they speak to the moat uh, as uh, much as you want to argue about Hylion having a competitive moat um, on their channel. I'm very bullish. And it's one of those uh, real conviction pieces. Uh, is what drives my uh, bullish thesis on, on Hylion. But um, uh, right now, uh, just for full disclosure, I've had some people confused about my position, which is totally fine uh, for interest's sake. Um, I'm still grinning. I'm going to talk about some of the reasons why. Uh, some of these folks, and even in my small network of, of, of friends, I guess, through YouTube, uh, are even maybe second guessing and raising an eyebrow as to what the independent investor channel is doing. Uh, I could very well be wrong on this deal. Uh, and I'm prepared to be wrong. It's no problem. Uh, but it's going to be on my terms. Okay. And um, my, my conviction over my stock ownership and, and whether or not I buy into uh, a dividend investing philosophy or a passive investing, because there's certain YouTube characters out there that yell and scream up and down about um, their right in stock market investing. I'm here to tell you, man, that none of that shit exists. And none of it is, is, is prudent in reality. Um, Stock market is, is a game that uh, it um, you know can, can validate your perspective in the short term, and it can pr prove you dead wrong uh, over the short, medium, or long term. Doesn't matter. You got to pay attention to this gig. Uh, certain applications and strategies allow you to take more uh, of a hands-off approach. Passive investing is just that. I don't sit there and manifest over my passive positions in the stock market. I do want to be a participant in the market, and I'm buying into fundamental. Uh, perspectives about past performance to base my opinion that that future potential will be there in the market. Uh, and I have a good chunk of my net worth uh, uh, devoted to that strategy going forward. Okay. So the lens that I look at a, a company like Hylia um, is, is more philosophical and, and more psychological than, 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 than anything. And there's going to be schools of thought out there that um, really do try to apply a very elementary perspective to stock market investing and make sense of the fact that at some point they got involved with Hylion Holdings and now they're down in the company 
and, and therefore that's something to be judged upon or it is something to be commented upon or even maybe go on the offensive and, and start to downplay or start to discuss what it is with the company uh, is going on right now from a, from a negative light. It's easy to do so. It's, it's easy. Um, what's difficult to do is what I'm doing, uh, coming on and uh, talking about the perspectives and the need, the addressable market out there in, in you know, the, these tech companies that are coming out with um, these solutions uh, to move into a, a, a future that is less dependent on fossil fuels, okay? Now, a lot of this drive and a lot of this initiative comes from industry in and of itself. And I think we're in somewhat of a phase here where I don't have that reciprocated feeling from uh, the industry partners uh, that Hylion is supposed to be um, uh, partnering with um, and the industry as a whole. Now there's been some initiatives to uh, branch out and, and engage in uh, the EV market here over the past uh, year, especially over the last recent year and over the last couple of years, uh, EV has really caught fire and, and really pushed into this, this realm of, okay, maybe we're ready to make this uh, leap of faith into uh, electrified future, whether it be all electric, uh, battery electric vehicles, uh, or, or the hydrogen fuel cell space. It's an exciting time in history. Um, how it will transpire over time uh, is anybody's guess. And I think there's certain bets being made, especially with Nikola uh, and Hyzon specifically, in that, you know, it seems like every week we pick a different horse on who's winning the race. And, and I, I feel like if they all get it right, I think that will be good as an industry as a whole. Um, but I'm not one to dub any any of these three horses a champion right now, at least when we're talking about electrifying the class eight space for semi truck and long haul trucking. OK, I think all too often it's unfortunate Hylion seems to be correlated from day to day with the stock action of both Hylion and uh, Hyzon and Nicola. Uh, the like. And as of late, I tell you what, the slew of good news that has come out on Nicola has been nothing shy of impressive. There's no doubt about it. I tweeted to this, uh, to the same, and, and really kind of put highly on, on, on some sort of notice as to why they seemingly can do this, uh, marching toward the future that they envision. Uh, and highly on seems to, uh, as of late, have gone into a, a little bit of, of more of a closed vest uh, a kind of a closed door approach um, to the investors out there. Um, and that's perhaps maybe the, the frustrating part for me is that they've, they've entered into that. But from week to week, it seems like we do pick a different horse. And, you know, my concerns uh, about Nikola has been, has been very, very simple. Um, unlike seeing the product from Hylion that I'm invested in, uh, in the hands of, of, of customers right now, being validated over the road, we have had nil negative responses back to customers. Matter of fact, customers that are riding as per the Hypertruck Innovation Council and Roadshow uh, have provided nothing but positive feedback. Uh, that's great. I'd like to see more. I'd like to see more validation along this front. I think I'm more speaking on the perspective that Dexter shares through Drive Mix Game and seeing the hybrid unit actually in service um, in, in the in the uh, uh, in the Permian, I think it's in the Permian Basin in West Texas, um, for Detmar Logistics specifically, and actually putting uh, being put into the rigors of of over the road transport, and I think for me that goes a long way in saying, man, are we dealing with a concept here, or are we dealing with something that is really viable to fleets uh, in, in 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 a real world application. And this is where I think we're, we're lacking with Nicola. I really do. Um, I have scoured the landscape and there's a lot of LOIs that come through uh, on a lot of companies jumping on the Nicola bandwagon. The problem that I have with it is how are they doing in the real world application? How is that truck or whatever truck is going to be best suited to reach that seven, eight, nine, and 10 year life cycle that it's going to be necessary to drive that bottom line um, value over time, the value proposition, the total cost of ownership, the TCO over time. If they can't get to that mark, then what the hell are we talking about? And a lot of schools of thought with mechanical application is 
you're putting new technology. You ever heard the old saying, you don't buy the first line car uh, off the off the line because there's almost guaranteed going to be kinks and and things that go wrong that were unforeseen, things that were rushed through in the production phase that were not tried through and tested, um, different applications, different driver tendencies, different over the road rigor um, that that those mechanics are are put under over time. And and so how are some of those things going to transpire? Is highly on less likely with their solution that they have, not trying to reinvent the entire uh, truck from the ground up, are they gonna incur less or more? Um, my presumption is that they're gonna incur a lot less uh, of, of that scrutiny in, in that Hylion seems to be right there in the driver's seat at, at actually have already validated their ability to put this product in the hands of customers and, and, and feel like they can put it uh, out there with uh, some assurance that that return in value will be realized over time. So if we can't get to that value proposition with the competition, what are we talking about here? And so it'll be fun to continue to monitor the, the competition. Um, there was some folks that uh, maybe heard wind that I picked up some shares of Hyzon and Nikola. Uh, I did. Uh, it was a, a terrible investment for me. Um, I made money on both of them, uh, but a terrible investment in that I was I FOMO bought both of them. And I sold them a couple days after I bought them. It was on their momentum run up, uh, and I'm glad I, I I I made really good money on both of them. Uh, I was joking. I tweeted because somebody was picking fun at me, like, "How about that Hyzon investment now?" And and it ju it just really speaks to people's I don't know maybe joy that they get off of somebody else's pain. I'm not really sure. Um, I, it's really fickle. Uh, I'm not surprised. Um, again, people's application and, and drive and motive in life. Um, really does, uh, quite honestly, and all too often, um, speak to how people pay way more attention to uh, others than they, and they probably should pay more attention to themselves, I think. Uh, but, um, you know, a few things I want to talk about here, and I, I spoke about kind of the, maybe the, the perception of a stock right now. I, I just mentioned a few things. There's no hope. There's no end in sight. There's no sales. I'm hoping for a remedy on this uh, Q4 wrap up of 2021 here coming up in February. Uh, that'll be nice. Uh, no news and real, really no promise of, of an end in sight. I, I think that's the piece that a lot of people are speaking to and they're speaking quite elegantly about it, whether it be on Reddit, uh, whether it be in the Discord group, whether it be in the highly on Facebook group, uh, whether it be um, on the Yahoo thread and finally on Twitter, uh, which, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if I think a lot of people are just quick to drop something and, and it's old news. And people aren't really talking about it. The volume is really light uh, on highly on holdings, the stock right now. Um, so I think it's one of those things that is just absolutely under the radar or swept under the rug is probably a better analogy. Uh, I think a lot of people are looking at it like a dead carcass with maggots all over it. They're not going to touch it. And, and I think the sentiment is that bad. I, if I could just give you some sort of an analogy. I, I don't sugarcoat stuff. I am interested always in reading everybody else's opinion, but there's one thing about Paul that I really like is when he rolls out his opinion, um, he, he speaks what he believes it to be the truth. Um, whether it be in the eyes of the beholder is, is, is yet to be seen, but he speaks the truth when he says it. And, and I like that. I, I think that if he walked uh, across or, or, or buy a, a pile of, of feces on the side of the road and it was smoking, he would just call it that. It really smells and it's really not that attractive. I mean, it came out of a dog's backside. And just tell it like it is, man. Things are not good right now. They're not good. I, I think, what does that mean for us? I think we need to come back to some of the fundamentals I'm really interested in. I've got a couple points here to talk about as we look to recap the week recap the stock action, stock bounced off of the five level, put it at 530, where it goes entering into next week. I have not the slightest clue. I got put 500 shares last couple of days. I held on to the puts 28 days in the money. Uh, and then the last two days dipped below that 550 strike. So I got put 500 shares at 550. I'm okay with that. Uh, because when I wrote the contracts, the contracts were up at 608. Uh, I sold at 605, stock ran up to 675. I thought I was fine, totally covered on it. Uh, but to cover that 550, I did write another contract at $5. I thought there's no way it's going to get down there. 
sure as heck did, got put the 500. But I think going forward, I think an interesting kind of perspective, and it goes along with my $24 price target. I've been asked about that um, quite a bit. And um, I'm steadfast on that. $24 is where it should be. Whether or not it makes it there, I don't know. It should be there. It's really simple. It needs to be, needs to realize a few catalysts in 2022, that of which could not be foreseen by any of the analysts, anybody that's governing the stock, myself included, but a few catalysts that need to kind of come to fruition. I think industry understands that they have a, a, a debt to pay. There is some accountability on behalf of industry that just continually drives these um, diesel trucks that are polluting the atmosphere, number one polluter on the earth. When we come back to the bullish conviction around Hylion, we need to discuss the accountability that needs to be levied against this industry that has gotten absolutely ungodly rich in a $1 trillion industry that can just rotate their fleets every four years and keep the newest trucks on the road and continue blowing carbon emissions into the environment with, with, with no accountability. And you look at anything out there, man, you look at owning a condo in Florida and it's nice and the palm trees are great and this and that, but you're gonna, you're gonna have dues. And those dues, those homeowner association dues are gonna be due every month. And some of them are pretty steep. And that's just a cost of doing business. It's, hey, you can enjoy the amenities and you can enjoy uh, the, the fruits of, of the opportunity that are being provided here in this United States, the very roads that you roll down, paid for by taxpayers and the government. And the cost of doing that business requires some level of accountability. And this is where the government either incentives or crackdowns uh, are going to have a positive tailwind for Hylion Holdings. We are getting a glimpse of this uh, from the California market. I, I think, you know, uh, the, the politics I stay away from uh, on the Independent Investor Channel. I'm, I'm fairly apolitical anyway. Um, there's a lot of views that I have are on both sides of the aisle. So where does that put me? I guess it puts me as a black sheep because I'm supposed to think one way or supposed to think the other way. Uh, and if I don't agree with the other side, um, then, I, then I'm somehow a, a bastard and I, I'm an outsider. Uh, I, I just typically like to um, incorporate a lot more free will with my thinking. And I, I do commend my friends in California, Oregon, and Washington uh, for probably being some of the leaders in this um, to protect the environment. Oregon has given up a lot economically to, um, you know, to, to avoid uh, big oil from coming into the coastline, uh, to avoid uh, companies and, 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 and uh, interstate commerce uh, and global commerce uh, from coming to the shoreline of Oregon. That's, that's why it's one of the most pristine coastlines uh, in the world, in my opinion. It's, it's fabulous. It's breathtaking. It's worth seeing for anybody. It's spiritual if anybody can see it. My point is they put more value in the economic um, or the um, environmental uh, impact uh, and initiatives that say, look, if you're going to drive the I-5 corridor through my state, um, you're going to pay the toll. You are going to pay the toll. Here on the East Coast, we charge people tolls for no reason. <laughs> you, you get the honor of driving on my, uh, my expressway. Now you get to pay a few dollars uh, to enjoy said expressway. Hey, the irony in the whole thing is the Chinese own all those now. So um, we're slowly selling the, uh, the, the great American dream abroad because those are money makers that just don't go away. Uh, I digress. My point about accountability and the, the companies out there to, that have been running these big rigs and, and, and polluting the environment with really no repercussion at all, I, I think really we are at a, a time in history where I think in, instead of fighting, I, I think we can start to integrate some of these solutions. Um, are we coming to that impasse? I believe we are. Uh, I, are. Are we there yet? Absolutely not. Uh, I, I see these companies and they talk big, they do. Uh, and I've challenged the notion that to big companies, if it does not constitute a benefit to the bottom line, they will not change for the sheer sake of going green. They will not, no way, no way. There's no company out there, and this is a very bold presumption on my part, there is no company out there that cares that much about the environment to sacrifice their bottom line for the sheer uh, purpose and mission of going green in their fleet. It ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna, it ain't gonna happen. 
unless there's a quantifiable benefit to the bottom line, these fleets will not shift. They will not, unless one of two things happens. Number one, the government comes out and says enough. We believe wholeheartedly in uh, global warming. We believe in the effects that the transportation industry has had uh, over uh, transportation. And here is your penalty if you do not uh, get on board and start to shift and phase in some percentage of your fleet over the next two, three, five, 10 years, 15 years, over the next 25 years. I come back to how uh, dysfunctional uh, our government is and the ability now where everything is politically driven, not progress driven, right? Um, every four years we have a change in, in leadership and nothing comes of it nothing there's more talk before hand of taking power uh, with regard to our government than there's ever uh, turned out in in reality um, i've yet to see any trickle down effect of the uh, the um, infrastructure plan that was passed uh, i i read the section on ev um, I, th I thought it was really poorly written i thought that the emphasis on uh, ev infrastructure was way too tough and it wasn't smart it was not smart application. Highly on holdings is smart application, but being smart in an industry where there's so much competition and so many competing entities that want to see you fail, uh, the verdict is still out on, on whether or not this good idea uh, is just going to end up being a fart in the wind eventually. So um, we'll see on that, but accountability. The number two thing is whether or not uh, governments are going to offer that incentive. Now, incentives can help bridge the gap between the chance that they take with new technology, even with the risks that I identified with, let's say, a Nikola, uh, without the proper infrastructure, without the tried and true test of the mechanics over the road, etc., problems that cannot be uh, foresaw in the short term validation only over the long term. In other words, can these products make it to the end of life, uh, the seven to 10 year forecast when they're running the uh, total cost of ownership calculations? You know, um, we'll see. I think those incentives would just be an absolute game changer. Uh, and if the government was that adamant about reducing greenhouse gas emissions, then they would pro provide a small incentive. I saw a trickle of that with Nikola come out. And that's what I challenged highly on with acknowledging is that Nikola is really leading the way with regard to winning uh, some of those um, uh, uh, the pollution credits. Um, in the Los Angeles area, the port of Los Angeles, uh, to the tune of $125,000 per truck. Imagine that incentive being paid to these companies that are turning out these solutions and sharing in the risk, right, where the payback will be unmeasurable because the impacts to the environment by the nature of the science and the technology that we have now will absolutely be a net positive to the environment. To, to what degree? Well, I don't know. But do we keep the status quo or do we challenge it or challenge it to the extent that we're willing to change? And I think the willingness to change is the piece that I talk about in demanding accountability from the fleets out there. All right. So I always want to talk about the value in Hylion, the, the product, the demand on the product and the team that they've been able to account for. Nothing has changed really or transpired in the young evolution of this company. but. I think this team and the product and the, the, the very concept of the company, that it will be, it will be challenged uh, over the next coming years as the company evolves and it matures. But I think, man, people assess value in so many different ways. It's amazing to me how the, the, the landscape right now, companies are trading at valuations that are unsustainable. It's just that simple. And when you look at a company like Hylion and people are looking at it and saying there's no value there, um, where is the value? Um, the stock is going to zero because it's worth nothing. Those are very, very short-sighted applications when you're looking at the reality of what's going on right now. Hylion does have a product. They are selling said product. They are marching toward finalization of their flagship product. Customers love their product. I have yet to see contrary information to challenge that assessment. The customers love this solution. They, they love how it can potentially even promote or reduce driver fatigue, driver satisfaction, 
right? Um, but I, I think the true value here is, is really missed a lot of the time when we're looking at a stock price that no, nobody wants to even comment on except for to say it, it's, it's over, it's a lost cause. And I, I just, I will not play into that. Um, I won't. Not, now is not the time to do that. The time to do that is when the chapter closes on this and the company is either taken over, it makes it, or it goes out of business. We are just in a phase right now. And you can judge in the short term all you want about where you think the dis disposition of the stock goes. It means nothing. You might be proven right. That's the irony is I think a lot of these social media heads really are just throwing out their opinion with the sheer sake of being right. I'm here to tell you that there are three options with this. Either it gets taken over, it goes out of business, or it ends up thriving and making it. Th those are the three options. And, 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 and I don't presume to know which option or which path Hylion is gonna go down. My bet is that they actually thrive or continually ramp up toward that mass scale up um, and, and the rollout of other product. Um, the next is, is really the vision. And I think a lot of people, man, they really muddy the waters with Hylion when we're talking about the simple idea of rolling goods down the freeway in an economical way, uh, in an environmentally friendly way, and doing so without the use of fossil fuels from point A to point B. In and of itself, um, I could do without the fancy paint. I could do without the joking tweets about coffee mugs and all that stuff. That's all extracurricular, okay? If Hylion were all about coffee mugs and, 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 and no news, I wouldn't invest in the company. What I'm investing in is the potential of fleets to integrate and move product from point A to point B in a more economical, and a more environmentally friendly way. And there's a few other intangible benefits there, driver fatigue, uh, driver acceptance of the product, um, and the uh, lack of need for extended fueling times uh, with the solution. I, I find no fault in this solution at all. Uh, and I've looked over the last 18 months, I find no, no fault. So if it can check all those boxes, right? And the solution, allows for a company like Hylion to recognize their vision, which is to be the leader in class eight electrification of basically the drivetrain of the trucks, very, very simple. Take it, replace the diesel element with smarter technology, right? Something that allows the exact same truck to run the exact same route more efficiently, quieter, and better for the environment. That right there in its most simple terms is the vision behind Hylion. Whether or not that vision gets bought up because of poor management, the lack of the CEO to carry this vision into the future, I don't know. I don't speak to that disposition because evidently Hylion is making a choice to be silent on the line. There might be good reason for that. There might be one of those situations where I, I saw a Facebook post that said that the justification behind it might be uh, to protect what they're working on for unpatented un products right now. And if that information is disclosed, that they will be ineligible to uh, receive that patent, that they're working so hard on that pri proprietary intellectual property, okay? That might be. So as critical as I might be at the lack of news out there and the lack of realizing that vision in the short term, there might absolutely be justifiable reasons behind it. Another thing I want to bring to investors' attention, as well as would-be investors, remember how I talked about the concept that the more the stock goes down, the more of a value proposition that that might uh, prove true for new investors that don't have anything to do with the company right now. Um, you know, investors in the company are obviously taking a little bit of pause um, in their money making, but you know, for people that have been uh, and provided uh, transparency on the conviction that they have interesting enough for new investors to sit there and be like, wow, th this is really interesting. Um, this is not a concept company. I, I find that all the time when people are saying that they have no product. Wow, I, I, I really don't understand that short-sighted application. But the validation piece that I'm getting right now 
slowly trickling in right now. Uh, stock doesn't get influenced at all, but the validation for me is has really stepped up. The EX hybrid is that validation. More companies are putting it into their fleets. And think about this for a second. Thomas Healy's talked about the EX hybrid being kind of a, a, a springboard uh, per se into the Hypertruck ERX and understanding that the, a lot of the benefits, the technology, um, the, 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 the system uh, that, that's used, the onboard navigation system that's being used, the data and analytics that's extrapolated uh, through the cloud and the algorithms that are being read by the technology uh, technicians at Hylion. Um, it's a great segue into the Hypertruck ERX. So the validation that's going on right now is extremely important. And there's going to be people out there that say it's not enough, it's not enough, that we need more, more, more. I, I, don't, I don't know. You know, it, it's amazing to me how companies like Return It come to the forefront. They say, we've been a customer for a long, long time. We're taking delivery of a new product here. Hylion's doing things behind the scenes. I just don't know if they put in, in their best interest right now sharing everything that they do with the open community. If the stock goes to 10 or 15 or 20 or 25 here over the next two or three years, you want to want to know what all this talk is going to mean right now? Zero. Zero. And it's amazing how the stock market has an extremely short memory, as well as people, because people are going to come in and they're going to be like, Ryan, I told you all along. Yep, you, you sure did. You, you told me. Yep, I was right with you, Ryan. I was right with you. I was just as courageous as you were. I know. I know you were. I know you were. You, you were just as tough as me. Trust me. Yep. Yep. I held true with you, man. I was with you lockstep all the way. And I, I know there's investors out there that get it. They understand the perspective of, of this. And, and, and although it may continue to go, go down, it could stay uh, you know, neutral. It could go up over the long term. I, I don't really care. To be honest with you, I'm invested over the long, long term and interested in where the uh, prospects of the company are going to be uh, once they have a chance to really, really allow this validation that's happening right now in real world application, take hold uh, and word gets out and the ability to transport goods from point A to point B in an economically uh, beneficial way and one that is good for the environment and that being the kind of the, the, the cherry on the top. OK, uh, these companies want to advertise that they're green. There's benefit in there. Um, I, I'm hard on institutions to say that they don't want to change unless it benefits the bottom line. They do want to change so that they can uh, advertise to their customers uh, that they are a green energy company, move up on the pecking order on those companies that are taking that, uh, that um, uh, step in the right direction in environmental stewardship. Um, but they're not going to put the horse before the carriage. They're not going to fly that flag and give up bottom line profits. It's just not going to happen. The perspective that I want to share with you guys is, is one that really pits the retail investing philosophy against the institutional philosophy. Institutions have the opportunity to invest in companies indefinitely. They don't care what happens day to day. They don't care. Whereas conversely, it seems like retail investors from month to month, they either love the company or they hate, hate the company. Go back in the Facebook group for Hylion. I just saw a post in there um, when somebody took a screenshot of the stock at $9. Buckle your seatbelts. It's going to the moon. Short sellers are getting squeezed. I'm just sharing with you some of the perspective. Mind you, this was two months ago. Okay, it, This is it. Buy the stock now. Everybody jumping on board. I assume there was a lot of buying because I see a lot of people are like, I bought the stock at $9. I bought the stock at $7.50. That's what people get excited about when the stock goes up and the stock goes down. Nobody talks about it. Nobody. The perspective in this is to understand that that day-to-day -day validation will drive you bonkers. It really will. You need to ask yourself a few things about what I discussed about what vision they have for the future and market marching into a cleaner transportation industry. Does Hylion have the solution to do that? Yes, they do. Are they validating the product? Yes, they are. Are customers happy with that validation? Yes, they are. Is it cost? Is it economically feasible with or without government intervention? 
to run the Hylion solution in their rigs. Absolutely, pays for itself, right? run the calcs. Seven to 10 years out, uh, total cost of ownership, the solution pays for itself, right? It's easier to run the system than to not run the system, right? Um, I don't see why this isn't a slam dunk right now. Um, I don't know why the floodgates aren't opening with, flood, uh, with uh, back orders right now. As we speak, we should be hearing about back orders every day, not once a quarter, not 40 sneaking in and when it's going to be fulfilled. Nobody knows. Nobody knows how binding it is or if it's not binding at all or Monet's just doing it for advertising. Hell, it's great. It's free advertising. Wonderful idea. If I was a company, I'd be like, I'm, I'm going to put 10,000. I might get free orders. Man, like Ryan's trucking company uh, with the Independent Investor Channel just put in an order for 10,000 uh, hyper truck ERXs. It's wonderful. It would go global. Uh, and then I would just renege on the order and just pull out. These are questions that people have with regard to, you know, where we could potentially go. But, you know, when, you, when you're talking about that perspective from a retail uh, investor's perspective, keep it in check a little bit. Um, uh, understanding the opportunity that you have to even become an investor in a company like this really does speak to the fact that nobody owes you anything, okay? You chose to do this just like I did. I pro provide my transparency to you guys to help mitigate some of the common misconceptions about investing as a whole. Now, people will screw up investing if they don't have the right perspective anyway, because instead of like you run the risk of losing money, I'm here to tell you, if you invest in the stock market in any capacity at certain times, you will lose money. You will lose. If that scares you or, or, or you don't understand or can't get past that elementary door of entry into stock market investing, understand the grander picture as to why you do it, don't do it at all. Don't do it at all. Or go back to the drawing board and find out why it is that it's okay at certain times to stay true on your conviction going forward in a company like Hylian. All right. I want to talk about a few things. I want to shift gears a little bit, talk about five things. I get a lot of heat on the Independent Investor Channel. As a matter of fact, we'll talk about that right now because it's of interest to me. Here's a few comments that I've vetted just this week. Okay. Um, I'm trying to save my skin by putting out highly on videos every single week. Um, my skin is fine. My perspective is fine. My um, um, approach and where I put value in life. Uh, puts my financial health in a specific box in my life. No more, no less. My skin is fine. Furthermore, if you don't like that or your perception of me is that I'm trying to save my skin um, by putting out weekly highly on videos, I, I would welcome you to hit the unsubscribe button to my channel, turn the video off now and kindly leave. No problem, no love lost. This is my time. If you want to come on and scrutinize highly on holdings and talk about where I've got it wrong, no problem. Don't make it personal with me, okay? I do this on my own accord and, and in an environment where there's not a lot of people out there that are sharing information from this perspective. Why? Because YouTube is fraught with bitches. It, it really, I talked about that everybody wants to really, and it's causing more damage, to infuse the retail investor's mentality which is to bitch all the time, to infuse that all the time and be like, you're in the stock, you're out. Peloton is going to the moon, invest in it. AMC, what do you think, Ryan? That whole mentality is garbage, man. And it's taking investors in the wrong direction until you want to wake up and pull your head out of the sand, man, and stop applying what you think you know about stock market investing over the long term. A lot of people do unfortunately get their information from YouTube. I think that's stupid. Um, if you think it's stupid, the information you get from me, turn it off. I have no problem. I invite, I invite you to do that. You're not going to hurt my feelings. Um, you may miss me. You may miss me because um, I, I, I typically speak the way I feel. And for somebody to come on and say that I'm trying to save my skin by doing this, hell, I talked about it and I was joking a little bit. I make about $20 per highly on video to get 3,000 views. You want to start a YouTube channel? Let me tell you, man, your motive cannot be about money. Um, there's only one Graham Stephan on YouTube, and he's actually good. There's only one Joseph Carlson. There's only one Gen X dividend investor. Th those cats are good, good YouTube channels. Me, I run a little different angle. They know that about me. It's no problem. I have, I have no love lost at all. 
But if you think that you're going to come on and scrutinize me based on what you think my motive is with my message, uh, you're sorely mistaken. Next, I'm trying to boost the stock. That is the stupidest thing I have ever heard. I am trying to provide awareness on a, on a company that I have 100% conviction on, 100%. A, a, a YouTube channel with 30,000 subscribers, um, that of which probably has about two or 3,000 devote subscribers to it, devote insofar as not being subscribing to the channel one time, never to return to the message again, because you think I'm boring, you think I'm pompous, you think I'm an asshole, you think I'm misguided, you think I suck, you think I'm a crappy investor, whatever it is, go somewhere else. Trying to boost the stock by coming out with highly on videos is about as stupid as a comment as I've ever heard. You can continue to think along that lines. I can't control the way you think. But honestly, if you think it enough to sit through a highly on offering of mine, and then think it enough to take your time to offer a comment like that, um, I'm here to tell you, man, it doesn't make the first bit of difference, okay? I openly disclose to you that I come from a bullish perspective. Um, I, am I unhappy about certain things? Can I come up with a bearish thesis? I, sure, I certainly can. But I, I think my extended videos on Hylion, I watch 10-minute videos on Hylion, and they piss me off. Because I'm like, we're really hungry in the landscape to have an open discussion about this. And I, I've yet to find a forum that the, the Highly on Discord, I think, is a good group. I think they do a great job. I really do. I think each and every one of those communities have its own little pocket of value. But when you start throwing shots over the brow on something like that to imply that somehow I'm getting rich over YouTube or I'm doing it to boost the stock, you're sorely mistaken. The stock is going to do what the stock is going to do, irrespective of what the independent investor channel does. If I had a mic, I would drop it. All right. Number three, the independent investor is stupid. Okay. I think the actual comment was from the Yahoo thread. And um, I'll be honest with you, man. Like, uh, I'm, I'm not so like uh, um, insensitive, insensitive or, or desensitized on social media. Uh, to feel that somebody's coming from a pretty dark place to come onto a social media landscape and say, the independent investor channel, or right, he didn't call me out by name, but he said, must feel really stupid because of investing in this company. What, what a short-sighted way of going about putting scrutiny out there directed at one specific person. Isn't that something? Really amazing. Um, I'm fine. Made lots of mistakes in my life. Um, met the companion of my life, gave me two beautiful children. I have a fabulous job. Uh, I serve my country uh, every, every day. Um, and people like that, they wouldn't know that before they throw those shots out across the bow about me, independent investor channel stupid. If you knew the truth about it, really, I, I'm fine myself. I, I feel more uh, worse about the potential for perception that I've misguided others. Um, that's the part that bothers me the most. Uh, and I think if I was immune to those criticisms, then that would mean something to me. But me personally, uh, no, I'm fine. My, my conviction, uh, my investment in this company is kept in a box where it belongs. And, and no, I, I don't run myself through any type of like self-doubt. Um, would I like to see the stock go up? Yeah, yeah I would. I sure would. Um, do I fret and frown about it every day? No, I don't. I know what the opportunity holds. And again, we may have the opportunity here in a year or two or never, I don't know, to reflect back on this time and say it was irrelevant, everything that we talked about. And by God, I had an insight to know that there was something special about this company. And here we are, you know, I sold out at that time. And I had Ryan coming on every week and being like, yeah, there might be something here that's pretty special. They're slowly marching in the right direction. They're doing everything above board. Uh, but making a criticism like that, uh, that, that I'm somehow stupid, I, I think really kind of reflects to, to your own deficiencies. I really do. Um, the last one is within our network. And um, I, I don't know if this individual watches my YouTube videos. I openly admit to not watching a lot of content. Um, th this is a friend of mine, okay, mind you, um, that's made this criticism now. And I'm astute. I pick up on this um, three times. So doubling down three times that somehow investing in highly on holdings is the exact same as gambling, okay? I was married in Las Vegas. I used to do a lot of gambling. I don't gamble anymore. 
I don't even play blackjack. I enjoy it a lot. Gambling is very, very simple. You take a set amount of money and you put it to risk enough to either gain 100% of your investment within a few seconds or lose 100% of your investment in a few seconds. That's gambling in a nutshell. This is not gambling. Um, if you wanna call it something, and I corrected the individual uh, on, uh, and said it was speculation, it is big difference. And this individual keeps trying to draw the distinction that what I'm doing right now is pure gambling in that I'm taking set amount of money, putting it to risk, and in a short time could lose it all or could gain it all. Now, remember in gambling, when you put set amount of money, you have to choose the amount of set capital that you put to risk, $50. The most that you can make out of that investment is 100%, $50, right? The idea somehow that this potentially um, in its darkest, deepest moment right now is, is somehow um, gonna go to zero next week, say the, the odds are fairly unlikely. Here's why. 650 cash on the books, um, negative sentiment, uh, negative headwind for sure with regard to market momentum, et cetera, driving all EV stocks, all speculative investments. You look at some other companies on the landscape that were just on fire two months ago. Uh, Affirm is a perfect example. And, and, and some of these folks were mentioning some of these stocks. Affirm is fabulous, man. You can pay now, and, you know, you can, or you can pay later. You can buy the item now and get even more in debt later. This is a great business idea. Stock is trading at, uh, it's been cut in half, right? Nobody talks about that. Um, a huge company like Alibaba takes a 50% haircut, but it, it's somehow gambling to enter into a stock like this for the sheer metric of always pointing out that a company like this doesn't have revenue. No kidding. No kidding. Okay. You don't think an investor like myself understands that a company like this at its current juncture, at this current amount of time, uh, just like Tesla, I might add, does not have revenue at this particular juncture. Will it ever have revenue? I don't know. Maybe it goes to zero. Maybe it is an all-sum game. In that particular instance, it is like gambling in that you can lose all your money. <laughs> Chances of that happening are very, very rare in my estimation with regard to where we sit now with the disposition and the lean business plan and the cash burn, the potential of realizing these sales that they've got on the books. They have sales on the books. They just have to be able to deliver on said sales. They can deliver on those EX deliveries ones that aren't impacted by the supply chain issue. But the comparison between um, investing in this company and gambling is kind of a shot to me. And I understand that there's a premise that's put out there. Hey, I'm not trying to single anybody out, but yeah, you kind of are. And I, I look at it and I sit back and I say, do I do that to other people? No, nah, no, nah, I don't. Um, and I think that's what separates me from others, man, is um, I, I don't care about um, building my channel at any cost. I don't care. Um, I care about putting out information that doesn't challenge others. I, I think that's a, a very uneducated approach to, you know, pointing fingers at a retail community and perhaps even implying that you've got all the answers as to um, what application will work in stock market investing and what will not and what will never work. And if you don't have sales, you have no metrics. I disagree. If you're comparing Procter & Gamble to Johnson & Johnson, certainly. Uh, even closer, uh, compare Pfizer and Merck. They're in the same sector. But when you're starting to compare emerging technology and saying that it was somehow okay to invest in Tesla before because now it's worked out when it was pre-revenue and that all other speculative positions are, are futile, I, I think is a little bit of a jab and I think it's a little bit of a help, uh, hit below the belt, I do. It's something that I don't do personally and I've heard it now three times. The first two I let go, um, the third time I'll comment on because uh, you better be right if you're going to double down on those things. Because like I said, I'll let the first two go. But when you're that wrong about an application, I'll speak up, all right? I wanna talk about five things that people justify when you're sitting there and you're owning highly on stock and you're like, man, am I stupid? I'm not getting any value back out of this. Here's five things that a lot of people justify buying in this life that 
you will 100% guaranteed lose money on home interest. A lot of people will pay 500,000 and you're like, oh my God, this is great. Um, my sister-in-law bought me a bottle of wine. They put it on the counter to celebrate my new, my new purchase. And I'm all about it. I'm all about home ownership. I'm all about it. But the socially acceptable reality is that people will enter into that home only to pay $750,000 over the amortized schedule of that because let's be real, most people don't have a half a million dollars just to go in and buy said property on the onset. They go in and they pick a loan and they agree to, or they just accept <laughs> more so the latter, the interest rate that's awarded to that 30 year cycle. Um, very few people I talk to are lucky enough to enter into a 15 year cycle. But for those that are, those are the smart ones because those are the ones that realize that you're gonna lose that on the back end. Nobody ever talks about that. Everybody wants to talk about sharing in the champagne. And oh my goodness, this granite is amazing. All oh, these baseboards are wonderful. Oh, the ceiling fans are fantastic. You know, but people will justify expenditures like that. It's okay just to take that quarter million dollars and flush it down the toilet. Actually, it goes right to the bank, right? This is why our banks can establish physical uh, uh, businesses all over this country and not have all client inside, okay? Home interest, car loans. Car loans is another one. Amazing to me how many people justify buying a fifty or a seventy-five thousand dollar vehicle, and I don't know. Maybe they think that they need a fifty or seventy-five thousand dollar vehicle, but if the rationale is to move you from point A to point B, sound familiar? Uh, then why do you need to have a seventy-five thousand dollar vehicle if you can afford it? Wonderful. If you can't afford it and you're honest with yourself, maybe that's an expenditure that you're really going to suffer from. My, my point is, if you enter into a loan for $75,000, where is that going to be worth five years down the line? Twenty-five. dollars In the case of a Chevy Silverado, $7,000? <laughs> I mean, cars and trucks do nothing but depreciate in value over, over time. Tack on another five years to that, it's almost dust. It's almost the value that, that is in dust. And people are so socially acceptable to that. And they will criticize somebody like myself insofar as saying you're stupid, right? For making a purchase in the capacity that I've done, right? Perspective, okay? Credit card interest, half of the country's in debt, but we're okay paying credit card interest. But when somebody like myself stakes, takes a stab, puts a little courage on the line there, enters into a position like this that I have full conviction on, I can't hold a company I don't have conviction on, that that's somehow like faux pas, yeah, time out, Ryan. What are you trying to do here, man? You're just a mud person. You're just a lemmings. Once you fall into line with everybody else, man, why don't you wait your turn? Why don't you stop trying to cheat? Okay, right? Credit card interest. So many people out there, average household debt, 14,000, unsecured credit card debt, we're, paying, we're buying too much. Um, I would be willing to say that out of that 14,000 average household debt, out of that 14,000, a certain percentage, I'll be fair, a certain percent percentage of those purchases are justifiably unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's socially acceptable. <laughs> we got to splurge every now and then, you know. I, I deserve this vacation. Whether or not I can afford it or not, that's irrelevant. <laughs> I, I deserve it, right? So I'm going to take it, okay? Restaurants, what a waste. Holy smokes, all those margins and food costs, they're going to the restaurant, man. They're not going to you. Go buy some groceries, all right? Hit Safeway, Albertsons, Kroger. And I, I'm, I live next to a Walmart. That's where I do mine. It wouldn't be first on my list, but that's what I've got for convenience. I hop in the car, I go buy groceries, right? So instead of you know paying $2.75 for my kid to have a Coke at Red Robin, he can have a Coke at home for 25 cents, okay? Th th that's where we give away the farm. And you think, gosh, that's a really bad example, Ryan. If we want to treat ourselves every now and then to a restaurant, so be it. You're kind of missing the point. You're losing all of that money that it would have cost to just go get groceries, provide that better, healthier alternative for you and your families, as opposed to going out and treating yourself to a luxury item when, in fact, you might not afford that. And it's amazing to me the number of people that I talk to that exclusively eat out at restaurants. It's like number one on their priority list. Where are we going tonight? Where are we going tonight? When was the last time they fired up the oven at their house? Dangerous stuff, man. It's starting to make sense to you as to why I justify why it is that I do 
with what I do and how it can make more sense. I don't look at my highly on holdings to say that I get that pleasure back from owning my own home or buying a, a really nice fancy sports car that would be fun to drive around. I, I get that, that, that validate. I don't get that from highly on, okay? Um, the credit card interest, right? The going and spending on things, everything I see, right? I don't get that, that pleasure by owning a stock like highly on, right? The last thing is frivolous spending on things that we don't need. Those accumulate over time to really speak to the bottom line application that I'm talking about where certain things are justified in this life and even socially acceptable. And I would go so far as to even glorified, right? Whereas the ability to enter into a company like Hylion Man, I've got a global audience and there's people who come into the Independent Investor Channel and they're like, man, I love how passionate. The last comment I have just today was one of my friends from one of my biggest audiences in the UK, right? He came in and he said, I love how you Americans are always hungry. You know, it seems like you guys are always trying to strive for a, 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 a personal best, always trying to up the game, evolve in your personal application and, and do something better with your life. That's what this means. That's what this means. Now, whether or not I can look at it in the short term and justify whether or not it's worth it or not is, is irrelevant. It's irrelevant, but it speaks to my perspective on where I put true value in this life. And I'm going to end this video by talking about five things where I actually true, do, do put true value, and it helps me to stay grounded in understanding what this position could potentially mean into the future, not now, into the future, not now, into the future, okay? Future, future, future. Stay with me, okay? You'll understand the method to my madness. And wait till this thing comes to fruition. It's going to awake the beast. Mm -hmm. It's going to awake the beast. Five things. Diet. Pay attention to it. If you're pissed off, when I fall off tilt and I start to get out of whack with my diet, it affects my mood. I can be pissed off about this all day, right? And it might be something completely different from this. It might not be this at all. It might be the fact that I fall off kilter and I'm not taking care of myself the way that I should. Diet, okay? Where do you put that on the priority list, okay? Where are some of these people, are they just in tip-top shape? Do they have some of these other things that I talk about um, enough to criticize me? I would venture to guess that if they had half of the things that I talk about in my value category, that they wouldn't come onto a social media uh, presence and start picking fun or saying I'm stupid or saying things like that. Uh, the negative connotation, why? Because they value their time way too much to come on and point fingers at somebody else. Exercise, super important. I was in the gym this morning, not at 05. I let myself sleep in a little bit. I was there at about eight o'clock this morning. No problem. Uh, rip out my ab exercise and my one hour on the elliptical. Yeah, it's a good one. It's good for the spirit. Makes you strong. It makes you understand what's important. If this thing, if this thing ever does turn into something, I'd be like, I'd like to be around in my late later years to maybe enjoy a little bit of it, maybe leverage the independent investor opportunity a little bit more. Maybe have some retreats and get together some fun things, man. I got all kinds of cool things that we're looking to roll out. All this thing needs to do is just cooperate uh, at some point. Whether or not it does or doesn't is irrelevant in the short term. I'm looking at it into the future. All right. Family, very, very important, man. Kids and wife for me. Most important thing, number one, this to me is in a box of perspective. I do not look at that the way I look at this. I don't. Completely two separate applications. And a lot of people have a one track application. It just, just, just sucks. And here's why. Or it's really good. And here's why. And this is my application. It's one track, right? Multiple applications. I don't love this the way I love that. No way. This is just a stock. That's it. Can I feel hopeful? Can I feel down, sad, depressed? I don't feel any of that. None of it. And it just speaks to my advanced application when it comes to stock market investing. You can call me stupid if you like. I'm not. Um, what I'm able to do day to day at my day to day job, you'd be amazed. And the people that I work around uh, all the time, they would say the same. They would say the same. Brian cares. He puts the effort. He can outwork people. He can outwork people smarter than him. Okay. So before you start to accuse me of being 
less intelligent, um, perhaps maybe you should look in the mirror, all right? Companionship, when was the last time you looked into that? It's the number one thing that I found in this life that um, pays off every day. It gives me benefit, emotional payback. It's an investment that I make that has provided me priceless payback, priceless. Um, are you unhappy because of that? Um, did you think that somehow that this was gonna allow you to go buy that Lamborghini and pick up a bunch of bitches from the boulevard um, and roll around like you're some sort of gangster? I don't know. Spend some time looking for a real companion. I don't know. How much time did you devote looking for a real companion? I can tell you what, man, it can buffer and put into perspective stuff like this when everybody else is calling for no hope, no sales, no news, no, no this, no that, right? It can buffer all those things. The last thing that I'm, I'll talk about is personal interest, um, personal experiences, going on vacation, things like that. But to um, expand upon your personal interest, the Independent Investor Channel for me is that outlet. It really is. Um, when, when I can stop doing highly on videos and I can just um, put my foothold in as a long investor and, and watch this thing really, really go up, honestly, this thing can just tick up a little bit and I'm a millionaire. And then everybody can be like, you're awesome, Ryan. And I'll be like, yeah, well, I'm, it's just beginning because I may not sell the stock. I'd like to see this stock go where it is that I think that it can go in helping global transport companies move goods from point A to point B. I, I just think that they have the potential to do it. Um, and I'm going to stick around and watch them do it. Um, will I probably take my original investment off the table? Perhaps. And I'll make those decisions down the line if ever provided the opportunity to make those decisions. But to find those personal interests for yourself, whether it be through music, whether it be through the arts, whether it be through spiritual um, Im improvement, whatever that, that may mean, um, yoga, uh, a martial arts, whatever that might be, uh, pursue those. Because if you spend all of your time expecting that you're going to get a feedback off of, I, I don't know, social media and engagement as shallow as that is, or, 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 or droning over a, a particular stock like that, it, it's about very, very shallow return in value. You could make money, you could lose money. But outside of that, it's not going to do anything for you emotionally. Um, whereas I think a lot of people unfortunately expect and bleed over that if somehow this happens, they're going to be more happy. Um, at your perspective, it's going to be extremely entertaining for you to get my perspective when this thing actually does go up. It's going to surprise you. It might bore some of you. It might actually, um, I don't know encourage you guys to maybe be um, better applicators uh, and take on a page out of my playbook with regard to my perspective. I talked about a lot in this video, I did. Um, and a lot of it had to do with looking at what it is that you have and a lot less at what others have in your personal application, especially, especially when it comes to your stock application. There is a bigger picture out there. Guys, if you appreciate the message, make sure and subscribe to the channel. Uh, make sure and leave your comments at the bottom of the video. Um, share the message with those folks out there that are hungry for highly on videos. Um, share the message with anybody out there, other YouTube channel creators who think that they're the only ones that create uh, highly on content. Uh, I beg to differ. Appreciate you guys staying with me for the totality uh, of this message. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And good luck in your investment future.